Oh, this is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Marianne Kellenbach, pastor of Living Faith Church, which is a worshiping congregation that is worshiping in the city of Port St. Lucie in the state of Florida. We are of the Lutheran tradition, specifically the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, or you might have heard the ELCA. And today is Friday. Hey, happy Friday for those of you who um, have off on Saturday and Sunday. Today is Friday, August the, oh my gosh, what is it already? The 26th in the year 2022. And by the way, happy Friday, whether you have off tomorrow or you don't have off tomorrow. Blessings to you on this Friday. So we continue on with our um, story from Luke's Gospel about the bent over woman who went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and how Jesus, uh, without asking, without her asking, without anybody saying anything, called her forward, saw her, um, was um, moved to compassion and mercy and uh, spoke words of healing and then laid hands on her and she was healed. So we're going to continue with that story uh, today and the reaction of the um, leader of the synagogue. So this is coming to us from Eugene Peterson's translation that is called The Message. After this happened, okay, the meeting place president, furious because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the congregation, said to the congregation, six days have been defined as work days. Come on one of the sixth if you want six, if you want to be healed, but not on the seventh, not on Shabbat, not on the Sabbath. But Jesus shot back, you frauds. Each Sabbath, every one of you regularly unties your cow or donkey from its stall, leads it out for water and thinks nothing of it. So why isn't it all right? for me to untie this daughter of Abraham and lead her from the stall where Satan has had her tied these 18 years. When Jesus put it that way, his critics were left looking quite silly and red-faced. The congregation was delighted and cheered him on. Jesus called out this leader reminding him, number one, of who this woman was, a daughter of Abraham. Number two, talking about the unbinding, what is exactly what Sabbath, Shabbat, the ending is all about. And how you untie your animals to lead them to life-giving water. Why is that okay? And this is not. Why do you do that on the Sabbath? One of the things that uh, I talked about yesterday was about how this man turned to the crowd, this leader turned to the crowd and was angry at them. And many times when we resent something or we're angry, we lash out to uh, maybe the person who we shouldn't be lashing out to. I mean, I would, I, when I read that, I had to read it a couple times because it was the crowd and the woman that he was angry about. How dare you come here on the Sabbath and expecting to be healed? I don't know that anybody did expect to be healed. I like to think that Jesus saw her, she was coming, and he had incredible mercy and compassion for her, was moved so much that he healed her. She never asked to be healed. But here's a question, and I love this. I was looking through different commentaries, and one said, if not today, then when? Why is today not the day? Today is called the end. Today is the day that we are to recall our freedom. So why wouldn't that happen today? We, we can get caught up in laws, in regulation, in rules, to the point 
where they get absurd. They get crazy and they do the exact opposite, perhaps on purpose of what it is that they're intended to do. Let's face it, we know that there are many rules out there and many laws out there that are meant to make things difficult, perhaps even someone's right difficult. If we are truly honest, we can make that honest assessment. Jesus is calling us out on these things. You know, 2,000 years ago and today, the culture was very similar. Everyone was looking um, as a way to make a buck, right? Everyone was doing that. There were laws instituted that were absolutely ridiculous, onerous, and oppressive. And we know that there are many of those rules that are set in place today. No, um, no government is perfect, but we work together to try and make those laws, those rules, those restrictions and admissions as fair and just as possible. But are they fair and are they just in God's kingdom? It's a really good question. A really good question. Because in this leader's mind, what Jesus was doing was breaking the rule of the Sabbath. And yet, and yet, when it was pointed out to him that everyone does this in some form or another, why wouldn't it be a natural thing for me to do for this woman to release her? If it's not today, when is it? And why not today? We are called to be the leaders of freedom, the leaders of justice, and the leaders of righteousness. Because that is who Christ is. The one who frees, the one who justifies, and the one who makes right. Take some time to think about the ways in which we think, and how that may be oppressive to the most vulnerable and the most needy in our community, the very ones that don't have the voice, just like this woman. How might we begin to take a look at some of the rules that we have in place, and especially in our places and houses of worship, we have a particular way to do things. Well, come on, let's change it up. Let's be free. Let's be the hands and the feet of Christ that move justice forward in a different way and bring about God's righteousness in this time and this place. Amen. Dwell in this and let us gather again tomorrow, Saturday, to continue our time together in listening for what God is calling us to do. Blessings and I will see you tomorrow.